Hey guys, um, it's amazing to be here. Um, coming all the way from Los Angeles, this is actually. Let's see. If I move this forward. Uh, this is a picture of our the front of our offices in in LA, and uh, you know this is good as a project that I worked on for about six and a half years now, and it's really dealing with all of the same kinds of ideas that that this make a difference that Matt is all about, and it's it's amazing to come halfway around the world and see so many people engaged in the same ideas and and trying to solve similar problems and figure out how we make a difference and do well in the world and have fun with it. Um, so let's see, there we go. Um, so Good is, as we once described, it's, it's a magazine, it's a website, it's videos, it's events for people who give a damn. And that, that definition has evolved a little bit over time, but, but I think that part is still true. And I'm curious, like by a show of hands, have any of you guys seen Good before, or read the website, or, or any of our stuff? Cool. So some people, it's, it's amazing that you know that the internet works. It makes it all the way around here. Um, so you know, this is a picture of our website from I think yesterday uh, or the day before. So you know, we cover these ideas of good, of, of how do we how do we move the world forward, whether it's through business or design or technology or nonprofits, um, and, and you know, we do it through news and video and and all kinds of different things. And so. I want to share with you guys a bit of the story of Good and, and how we got started and how we figured it out and, and where it's gone and this, this sort of framework of well, understanding how things were and, and how things are and where we go from here I think is, is one we constantly bring to ourselves at Good and uh, I think it's a, a sort of useful way to, to always check in with and, and how we think about things. Um, so, you know, back in 2005, so I was about 24 back then, and that's when these conversations were starting amongst friends. And you know, like I'm sure you guys know, we know the world is in a very amazing place. There's huge, huge problems, and yet there's so much energy and innovation uh, going on all the time. And, and, and how to make sense of that is something we were wrestling with. We had recently graduated college, and you know, we wanted to do something good, but get to do what our passions were at the same time. Um, and, and trying to figure that out, there aren't necessarily jobs to get into in that field, and it didn't feel that way back then. And yet, we started to look around and see that, you know, these were examples from back then that, that were new at the time, like the Prius was coming out in the US, and it was this first, like, eco-friendly car. And there's the Livestrong bracelet, which was this cause-oriented bracelet from Lance Armstrong, the cyclist, and you were starting to see cause things get more interesting and, and nonprofits, there was this nonprofit called Kiva that matches lenders with um, you know, micro loans in the developing nations and there were really interesting things going on that felt different and they felt new and exciting and, and yet we felt like the conversation around good in the US was one sort of stuck in this mode of like the 1960s and the sort of social movements of back then and we felt like there was this huge gap and it was really frustrating to us. And so we decided you know, that, was, that was something we wanted to do something about. The, there, there was an opportunity there and, and something we felt really strongly about. And it, it turned into this notion of almost for us, how do we rebrand good? How do we reimagine it? You know, we felt like if you talked about good in the United States back then, as a notion, it was either, it felt like something, it was like eating your vegetables. It was like, you know, uh, it wasn't something you, it was something you had to do. Uh, it wasn't something you wanted to do. And so, and yet we looked around and we were seeing interesting people and interesting new projects starting, very scattered. And yet, and they seemed like, you know, something that was full of creativity and full of innovation and, and things that were like really cool and powerful. And that's how we wanted to imagine good. And, and it turned into this idea of creating a magazine. Uh, we felt like there was something to say there, a way to bring this together. And we looked around and we had seen things like Wired magazine in the US that in you know, the 90s around technology had really reimagined you know, how you talk about technology. And, and we wanted to try that for this idea of good. And so this was the first issue. And this came out in 2006. Uh, and the, the cover says, blank like you give a damn. Uh, and it really asked of all of us, like, 
you know, whatever it is that you want to do or whatever it is that you're passionate about, do it like you give a damn. And that was really the manifesto of good. Um, you know, whether you love design or you love film or you love, you know, law or medicine, like how do you do it like you give a damn? And it didn't have to be this choice between, you know, going and be following your sort of professional passions and doing good in the world. Like how do you bring those together? Um, and that really was this notion that we wanted this new good, this, this reimagined good. It was not about altruism. It wasn't about renouncing your worldly possessions and going into the world uh, to do good for others with no concern for yourself. It was this idea of you know, self-interest and society's needs and how do we find the place uh, where we can work together from there. And you know, there's these series of Venn diagrams I'll show and they really are a big part of good because we felt like we needed new models. We needed new ways of talking about things that, you know, we felt like we had been presented with these dual choices and we didn't like either choice. We didn't like just self-interest or just society's needs. Like, we felt like there was an opportunity to do something that blended the two. And, you know, to that end, there, there's this quote I love from Buckminster Fuller, who's the guy, the scientist and engineer in the mid-century in the US uh, who created the geodesic dome and things like that. And he said that you can't fight things by change, you can't change things by fighting the existing reality. We need to create new models that make the old ones obsolete. And, and I think that was really what good was, was out for and, and also the thing that we sort of looked for in everything that we covered as a magazine. Um, you know, and these ideas of, of like not just competition in, you know, in a capitalist sense and not just you know, sharing and cooperation in a socialist sense, but how do you, how do you blend the two? How do we create new business models? Um, and for good, it was, it was reimagining this idea of like, you know, how do we create a for-profit company that also does good? And, you know, we sort of, this little chart was another diagram we made of, you know, like aiming in a new quadrant. So it's not just about making as much money as possible or not just being a foundation or a for-profit and doing as much good, but but how do you blend the two? Because that's really where we feel like true sustainability lies. Um, and for us, you know, one of the ways that we did this was in the beginning we created this Choose Good campaign. So when you subscribe to the magazine at the beginning, we actually partnered with 12 nonprofits that we thought were really interesting. And you could actually choose which one you wanted the whole of your subscription money to go to. And that was $20, which is what we felt like we could charge for the magazine. And you know, obviously we gave all of that money away, but it, the, as far as the business model worked, it actually helped us reach more people uh, more efficiently than the conventional model of direct mail, of sending people mail to their mailbox that is unsolicited and that has a terrible conversion rate. So it was like an interesting, innovative way that, that helped us actually reach more people and do good at the same time. Um, these other ideas that we were playing with was this notion of pragmatism and idealism. And, you know, I'll show some pieces from the magazine. So this was the opening spread of our first issue. There's, there's a saying in the U.S. sometimes that uh, is America, love it or leave it, which people use to, you know, if they, if they don't like what you're saying, they may, they may say that. And we sort of turn that around to America, love it or fix it. Um, and it was this notion of like, again, like, let's make things better. Let's be idealistic, but let's also figure out how to solve the problems at hand and not get caught up in dogma and not shut down debate in search of perfection. Um, you know, we also sort of really, as a brand, look to how do we create the space of both being entertaining and relevant. And, you know, for us, we did a lot of work in the space of infographics and how do you communicate in a really clever, interesting way, um, you know, visually charting complex things and breaking them down and making them fun to read. Uh, this was about donations, like candidates, imagining if candidates wore the donations they received, like, you know, sponsors on a NASCAR jersey. Um, and more, like, visual stuff in this space, uh, which really became a big part of good and, and what we became known for. Um, this was charting happiness across the world. Um, so, you know, and also I think looking at this idea of like how do we have fun and be serious at the same time. And, you know, an example I'll show there 
which is not something that we did, but something we've covered. There's an organization in the US called 826, which is a literacy and tutoring agency. And they've done this very fun thing where they have storefronts in a variety of, of cities. And all the storefronts have these fun like fronts. There's a pirate supply store in San Francisco. And here in Los Angeles, it's a time travel mart. And you walk in, and it's actually a store like that. And then there's like a back door where they do tutoring. And it sort of mixes this sense of fun um, with you know, a real important task of tutoring kids. And it, it helps get the young people in the neighborhood involved, too, because it's, it's more fun than just going down to some bland location and you know, doing your duty as a tutor. Um, so let's see. Um, and so I think where that's, you know, where that's led us over time is in doing these ideas and, and playing things out as we started as a magazine and we started to reach more people and that evolved into media um, and you know, doing video and doing events and, and all kinds of stuff like that. And then in 2010, in the media landscape, you do a lot of work with companies and that was getting more interesting and more elaborate and it actually turned into a place where we spun off a whole agency that, that now does just work with companies and bringing these ideas of good to them. Like how do we help Pepsi do good? How do we help um, IBM do good? Uh, and now we're also getting more and more involved in technology and how do we create tools that enable this kind of behavior. Um, you know, so just quickly, like this is sort of, another, again, like with the website, we've gotten a little bit more news oriented. We've developed sections of big issues, like education is one that we follow a lot in the US. Um, we've also overall become a lot more collaborative in how we've worked. So through media, you know, we've done some interesting projects. This was about um, kind of crowdsourcing and how do we imagine better streets in the US. And so this was a project where we sort of worked with a, a think tank who does these issues and defining what is a what does a livable street look like, and then worked with the community to get them to create these scenarios in their area, um, and we ended up with a great sort of collection of streets around the U.S. reimagined and, and reinvented. Um, we're also doing a lot more. That is, you know, this is a contest that we ran with a a partner in the education space where we're doing grant making and, and a lot more activation in a sense. So what started as like content and media has really become a lot more diverse as we've, we've built this brand and finding ways to reach people in new ways. Um, and then on the technology side, you know, this has turned into um, some projects where this is one good maker where we're creating a platform for crowdsourcing and, and crowdfunding and how do we kind of get grants to really interesting projects and let people come in and do that. Um, we're sort of created Good Finder, which is a social news component to Good. So opening Good up and letting it be much more open and collaborative to how people you know, can contribute to, to what it is and finding the best stories and, and you know, rating the best stuff to the top. So it's not just this editorial effort uh, that's based out of Los Angeles. Um, you know, some of you I, I've met have seen the email that we do. So we do a, a daily good, daily newsletter, uh, which is like one good thing a day, and it's one good interesting idea, sort of showcasing some of the best thinking in the space. Um, and as I mentioned, you know, getting into this agency space, we've done a lot of work. This is some stuff we did with IBM, uh, which was, again, in the sort of media and content space. But you know, we also did a program with Pepsi where we helped them develop this huge program that ran for the last two years where they actually gave away about $20 million through an online platform for identifying great community projects. And we helped them develop this and worked with them on how they ran it. And it was a really exciting thing to be a part of and, and get inside of a really big company that kind of wants to do good but doesn't totally know where to start. Um, and figure out how do you do that? How do you help them turn that ship? Um, and so with that, you know, uh, like part of us all here, like the world has changed so much in these past five years. And what I think started when we were at the beginning was something that not a lot of people got, but there were little bits and pieces where people understood this idea, you know, is now all over. There's, there's things like MAD here in Hong Kong and, you know, TEDx has sort of spanned the globe and a very similar sensibility. And, you know, I, I would mention I was 
talking with Ada the other night, and she said, the values that you guys have are the values that we have. And, you know, it, it's very true. These things are now global. And, and I think with that, you know, we're always looking at this idea with good from this entrepreneurial sense of what would we do if we were starting from scratch? You know, we know we have our existing businesses and we know how the media is evolving and how the agency is evolving, but it's important for us to always think about, you know, what would we do uh, right now? Like, what does the world need from good right now? And, and for us, it's thinking about, you know, how do we connect this global community that, that now is a global community in a way that it maybe wasn't um, around good years ago? And how do we enable them to, to actually do things? So, you know, that's, that's stuff that's on our mind and hopefully comes out in next projects that we have. Um, and I'll, I'll leave with this, which is one of my favorite new sort of quotes, um, which is that possibility is determined not by opinion, but by attempt. And I think that's really what entrepreneurship is all about, is just getting out there and doing it. And, um, you know, it's something that's exciting, the energy in this room, and I encourage all of you to just try it. You know, the, the last thing I'll share is that this is a photo of us back in 2005, I guess. That's actually me in the middle with, like, long hair and a mustache. Um, and, you know, someone asked the other day, like, what makes us qualified to be change makers or you know, to be entrepreneurs. And I guess the, the good and the bad news is I don't think anything makes us qualified. I think we just have to get out there and do it. And it's through doing it that we become qualified because we have to figure out our own, our own paths as entrepreneurs. No one, no one will have done what you've wanted to do before. And so it's just getting out there and doing it and learning. And, and from that, really great things happen. So thank you.